Hello guys, this is the first of the three videos having voltage call log analysis. There is so much to discuss in complete voltage logs. So, I had to divide it into three videos. Here you can see complete signaling of a voltage call starting from UE boot up. We can divide this complete signaling into mainly four steps. In first step, Volta UE attaches itself to the LTE network and establishes a default bearer for internet connection. Here in this set of messages, UE is attaching itself to the network and setting up default bearer for internet connection. Remember, this step is performed by each UE, whether it is Volta capable or not. Then in second step, Volta UE establishes a default bearer for IMS signaling. We call it IMS default bearer. This set of messages is used to establish an IMS default bearer. After this bearer is established, UE is able to communicate with IMS network via LTE network. Then in third step, Volta UE registers itself with IMS and subscribe for registration event with IMS network by exchanging SIP messages. Finally, in step 4, Volta UE makes MO Volta call by exchanging SIP messages with IMS. During this step, dedicated bearer for voice call data is established in LTE network. Now you can easily imagine that there is so much to discuss in these logs. In this current video, I will cover first and second step. After this video, our major LTE signaling part will be over. In second video, I will cover IMS registration and subscription. In third and last video, I will cover Volta MO call. Let's start with this first video, guys. See, I will go through only those UE messages that are important from Volta perspective. If you are new to log analysis and want to understand this complete log, I will suggest you to first go through my video on RSC connection setup and then come back to this video. Let's start with log analysis. No need to discuss RSC connection request and RSC connection setup messages as there is nothing voltage specific in these messages. Then comes this RSC connection setup complete message. Here you can see UE is sending this NAS PDU. This NAS PDU is nothing but encoded NAS message, attach request and PDN connectivity request. Let's analyze decoded form of this NAS PDU. Attach request. Here attach type is Combined EPS MC attach. It means UE wants to attach to both PS and CS domain. Here is PDN connectivity request message piggybacked inside attach request message. UE is sending this PDN connectivity request message to establish a default bearer for internet connection. Here UE is telling whether it supports SRVCC or not. As you can see, this UE supports SRVCC. Here is voice domain preference. It is the most important eye that tells whether UE is voltage capable or not. Here, voice domain preference for EU train is IMS PS voice preferred and CS voice as secondary. It means voltage call is preferred and circuit switched voice call is only a second choice. UE capability information. When UE supports voltage, it should support other features that are necessary for a voltage call such as semi-persistent scheduling, TTI bundling, SRVCC, etc. UE tells its capabilities to support these features in UE capability information message in the I feature group indicators. Each bit of this I represents some feature. RRC connection reconfiguration. Using this RRC connection reconfiguration message, network is setting up SRB2 and DRB1 in UE. This is the encoded NAS PDU having NAS message attach accept. EPS bearer identity of this default bearer is 5. DRB identity is 1. Logical channel priority of this DRB is 12. You must be wondering why I am discussing this message even though it is not related to Volte. You know, it is necessary to know down parameters of default bearer used for internet so that we can easily understand default bearer for IMS and we can do comparative analysis. 
Here I'm noting down these values. These parameters will be useful when IMS default bearer will be discussed. Attach accept. Here is decoded attach accept message. Basically, this message is reply from network for attach a request message sent by UE. Here is activate default EPS bearer context request message. It is a reply from network for PDN connectivity request sent by UE. Let's go inside it. QCI is 9. Here is the APN returned by network. Let me tell you one interesting thing here. UE does not send any APN while sending PDN connectivity request message for establishment of default bearer for internet access. A list of APNs and UE is allowed to use is stored in HSS. Network chooses one of the APNs from this list and shares it with UE in activate default EPS bearer context request message. Here is IPv4 address allocated by PDN Gateway to the UE for internet access. Here is something important. This I, IMS voice over PS session in S1 mode supported, tells that this UE is allowed to make a voltage call. For setting this I as true, MME checks UE capabilities, network capabilities, and UE subscription data from HSS. If both UE and network are voltage capable, and UE is allowed to make a voltage call as per its subscription data in HSS, MME will set this I as true. Now UE knows that it is allowed to make a voltage call, so it has to register with IMS network. But did you notice till now there is no data path between UE and IMS network? So UE has to make a IMS default bearer so that it can talk to IMS network. In order to do so, UE will again send message PDN connectivity request to LT network. Let's analyze this message. PDN type is IPv4 v6. It means this UE can support both IPv4 and IPv6 address types. But let me tell you one thing. As per specifications, it is mandatory for a Volte UE to support IPv6. APN name is IMS. Here I want to tell you two things. First thing, name of this APN is same for each mobile and for each network in the world. It is defined by specifications. Even in roaming network, you will send this APN. So it is kind of universal. Second thing, as we discussed earlier, while setting up default bearer for internet connection, it is non mandatory to send some APN to the network. If no APN is sent by UE, network will use default APN. But while setting up IMS default bearer, UE has to send this APN to the network. Protocol configuration options. UE uses protocol configuration options to request additional parameters of the destination network to which UE is going to connect. In this case, destination network is IMS. Here each protocol ID has some value. Each value has some special meaning as defined in specifications. Value 1 means PCSCF IPv6 address request. So UE uses this value to request PCSCF address from the network. Value 2 means IMCN subsystem signaling flag. This flag is used by UE to intimate to the network that this default bearer will be used for IMS signaling. Value 3 means DNS server IPv6 address request. Value 12 means PCSCF IPv4 address request. Value 13 means DNS server IPv4 address request. Did you notice length of content of each protocol ID is 0? See, because UE is just requesting these parameters from network, so length is 0. When network will return back these parameters, then this length field will have some value. Just wait for some time, we will come to that thing in a while. RRC connection reconfiguration. Here is RRC connection reconfiguration message in which network is setting up IMS default bearer at UE. Let's analyze this message. Here is encoded NAS PDU having message activate default EPS bearer context request. EPS bearer identity is 6. DRB identity is 2. Logical channel priority is 4. Let's now look into decoded NAS PDU and analyze NAS message activate default EPS bearer context request. QCI is 5. 
This is the IMS APN returned by the network. And this is the IPv6 address allocated to the UE. Now let's come to this important parameter, protocol configuration options. We saw earlier that PCO was used by UE to request few parameters from network. Now we will see what all information network has returned back in PCO. Value of the protocol ID 1 is 5. 5 means contents of this protocol ID will have the parameter selected bearer control mode. Length of the protocol ID 1 contents is 1. Contents of the protocol ID 1 is 2. So selected bearer control mode is 2. Parameter selected bearer control mode is basically used by network to tell UE whether bearer creation and modification can be triggered only by UE or both UE and network can trigger bearer creation. Value 2 means both UE and network can trigger bearer creation and modification. Value of protocol ID 2 is 1. 1 means Contents of this protocol ID will have PCSCF IPv6 address. Length of the protocol ID 2 is 16. Here is IPv6 address of PCSCF. This is encoded IP address. After decoding, it will come out to be this. Value of protocol ID 3 is again 1. So, contents of this protocol ID will also represent PCSCF IPv6 address. Here is IPv6 address of PCSCF. This is encoded IP address. After decoding, it will come out to be this. You can easily notice now that network has shared with UE IP addresses of two PCSCF. Now you will send activate default EPS bearer context accept to the network and establishment of IMS default bearer will be completed. One important point guys. IR92 says, it is highly recommended that the default bearer is used for SIP and XCAP. This reduces the number of EPS bearers used. However, in multimedia operations, another configuration can be used. So it makes sense to use IMS signaling bearer for XCAP as well. Let's do some quick comparison of various parameters of default bearer for internet and default bearer for IMS. You can see logical channel priority of IMS default bearer is much higher than the internet default bearer. This difference in priorities is quite obvious as IMS default bearer is used for SIP signaling. Next parameter is QCI. QCI means QoS class identifier. Here is QCI table. You can see both QCI 5 and QCI 9 belong to non-GBR services, but QCI 5 has much lower packet delay budget and packet error loss than QCI 9. Last parameter is APN. While sending requests for internet default bearer, normally UE does not send any APN. But while sending requests for IMS default bearer, it is mandatory for any UE to send IMS as APN. That is all for today guys. I will continue this log analysis in my next video with IMS registration process. I hope you would have enjoyed this video. Please like this video and share your thoughts in the comment section. For more such videos in future, subscribe this channel. Keep waiting guys for the next video. Bye bye.